Blog Talk Radio. Hi everyone, this is Camille from sunny California, and you're listening to the Coffee Chat with Camille show, which is a podcast series that interviews various guests about real life topics for people who love to learn. This is Camille, your host of the Coffee Chat with Camille show. We have a great guest, Eric McHugh, and the topic is, why is Web3 important? I'm going to first read um, Eric's bio. Eric's experience includes ad optimization for snapping, consulting, for Fortune 500, through the Chapter 11 bankruptcy process, dark matter research at Carnegie Mellon University with his brother's team, and helping found CartRev, a social com- commerce platform that had over 100 Shopify brands using Eric, is a 30-year-old entrepreneur whose philosophy emphasizes the importance of simplicity, adaptability, and a clear mind, which is translated well into the world of Web3 entrepreneurship. Eric specializes in leveraging his strategic thinking and adaptability to create innovative and effective solutions to the challenges facing this cutting industry. Eric's fierce independence and commitment to self-mastery made him a natural leader and role model for those seeking to live a life of purpose and freedom in the digital age. As a staunch individualist, Eric is a vocal advocate for decentralizing power and control, promoting the democratization of access and opportunity in the digital world. Eric has an IQ of over 140, enjoys playing chess and fine cuisine, and his main hobbies include fighting, chess, reading, and meditation. Eric just got back from a 10-day noble silence. Oh, forget this word. I think it's the um, Vipassana meditation retreat and recommends it to everyone. Presently, he is president of ShopX Web3 e-commerce co-founder and chief growth officer of dating and AI-powered matchmaking. In the past, he founded a SaaS platform that replaced affiliate codes for e-commerce brands, worked as a constant for Fortune 500 companies, helped Snap optimize their ad algorithm, supported the research team of Carnegie Mellon University and their dark matter research, and interned abroad in Barcelona, Spain. And then you guys can go, you, the wonderful listener out there, you all can go um, to his website or his company website, which is shopx.co. All right, so let's give a warm welcome to our guest, Eric McHugh. Hi, Eric. Hey, Camille, how are you doing? Wonderful. Welcome, welcome. Let's see here. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Such a pleasure. Um, we're going to go ahead and get into the interview. So your first question mm-hmm. is, Web3 mass adoption powered by... Oops, so sorry. <laughs> what is your backstory? Sure, sure. Well, nice to meet everyone. My name is Eric. I'm 30 years old. Blessed to be living in beautiful Southern California. Some of my main hobbies are chess, Muay Thai, reading, and meditation, pretty much everything under the sun. Just got back from a 10-day Vipassana meditation retreat. It's a beautiful experience. I highly recommend everyone give it a shot. I went to school at the University of California, Irvine, during which time I interned as a project manager in Barcelona, Spain, and and in Washington, D.C. as a government affairs consulting intern. 
right out of college, my first job was at Snap Inc. It was helping draft their ad algorithm. And there are two main reasons I chose that. The first was the first one was location, meaning is on Venice Beach. There's no one campus. It's a bunch of different houses, so work a bunch of work pods with different people, which I thought was cool. And it was also right before Snap had their IPO, so I wanted to see what it was like going through that. My first after that I got a job as a corporate restructuring consultant. Long story short, what that is, it's when a a Fortune 500 company goes bankrupt. They have to divide up debt amongst the appropriate parties, and so the court, the court, the lawyers, and the consultants work together to divide that up. At that point in time, I was really getting into Bitcoin. I was really researching. I was really doing my doing my deep dive, and that ethos didn't exactly align with the rent-seeking nature of corporate consulting. Meaning, as a fir- as an employee of the firm, I was billing out hours to the client. Those hours are getting paid by the client, so taking money from the pool that should have went to the creditors versus a consulting firm. So I quit that job. I started going to cryptocurrency meetups in my local area, which is Los Angeles. Met the original ShopX team. That project's been going strong since 2016, 2017. But in the meantime, we also launched a SaaS platform called CartRev that was a Shopify app that replaced affiliate codes so if you're a brand, you're at Shopify, you can upload your products to our database and any customer can come in and sell the product for you. So for example, if I like a Nike shoe, a Reebok hat, Adidas shirt, I can add all three products to my personal link and then any of my friends, followers, or whomever could purchase that link or purchase those products, they get a they get a discount so they're happy. I get a commission so I'm happy and the brand gets a sale so they're happy. At its peak, it had over 100 Shopify brands using it, which is important because all the e-commerce knowledge we molded back into ShopX. So what you, when you think of ShopX, I want you to think of the, the app or Google Web3. Long term, we're going to be a suite of products where a brand can download an app, and then they can gain Web3 benefits very easily. Right now, we have two products live. The first is ReserveX. That's NFT-powered loyalty program. So if you're a brand, you're on Shopify. If you're a brand like, I think our biggest client is Fox Studios right now. Directly within the app, you can launch a NFT collection. And what's different about this NFT collection is you can add e-commerce value to that NFT. Meaning so if your NFT holder wants a certain product, that product's attached to the NFT, only those, only those NFT holders can claim that certain product. This ties in perfectly well with our second product, which is SquadX, and that's our, it's the first ever blockchain-based ambassador program. So just like Twitter pays its, our creators, Twitter pays its creators in in U.S. dollars from their ad revenue, we pay our ambassador program for helping our ecosystem grow in Ethereum from ReserveX revenue. So the, the theory behind this is it creates an upward spiral. The more brands we sign, the more mints happen. The more money our community earns, the more money our community earns, the more posting they do, the more more positive energy associated with the product, thus getting more brands, creating somewhat of an upward spiral. The second project I'm working on is Dating AI, D-A-T-I-N-G, and what that essentially is, it's democratizing matchmaking services. So we have a matchmaker. Her name is Cupid AI. She's a artificial intelligence. The way that and this is to solve the problem created by dating apps. We think that dating apps really killed the market. So what we do is we, as a user, you can create a profile with dating, and then we'll we'll insta create a profile for you based on your social media footprint. So like your Instagram, your YouTube, your Spotify, all that interest. And then our AI will match you as someone based on your social footprint. So for example, like if I'm a for your college student, I'm studying engineering at the University of California, Los Angeles. It could match me with another four-year college student who's in a similar situation with a similar background, similar family dynamics, and all that good stuff. So it's hoping to our overall our overall goal for that is to match one billion happy couples together. So making the word a little bit smaller. Yeah, nice little long-winded explanation. I'm excited to get this combo going. Very cool. I love that. So it's AI matchmaker, is that correct? An AI matchmaker. Correct, yes. That's so cool. Love it. So what is Web3? 
So Web3, um, I think it's important to go over the differences between the rubs to understand Web3 and why it's necessary. So Web1, I want you to think of read-only, meaning if you're on Web1 and you're on the internet, you can read content, but you can't really create it. You can't own it. Web2, think of like Instagram, think of Facebook, think of YouTube. On Web2, users can create, they can read and write. The users can read other people's content and they can also create their own. So for example, I post a post on Instagram, that's me um, writing my content and then all my followers see that post, that's me. Uh, that's them reading the content. The only issue is they don't own the content. So Instagram could arbitrarily cancel me at any point in time. They monetize my data and make money off of me. So that's the issue of that. Web3, I think of as a crypto-based internet and I think it's the future. And in Web3, you can read, write, and you can own. So in Web3, I could create content, I can read content, but more importantly, I own the content so no one can cancel me. All right, excellent. And then how do you build a company from the ground up? Uh, so to build a company from the ground up, the most important thing is you have to be agile and anti-fragile. Agile means quick to adapt, and anti-fragile is whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Because as, like, when you're starting a company, you're not really sure if your idea is working or will work or if there's a customer base in the future or if the idea needs to be tweaked a little bit. So you just have to be constantly taking feedback and incorporating that into your system. And after a while, you get you get some paying customers. Then that's what we call proof of concept, meaning you've proven that your concept is working. And then from there, it's just continuous optimization. A lot of trial and error, to be honest. I'm sorry. I didn't hear the last part of your... It's a lot of trial and error. Trial and error. Gotcha. Yeah. And then what is the state of Web3? Um, so the state of Web3, that's a tricky question. The state of Web3, I would say it's still in its infancy phase, meaning prior to companies like ShopX, there's no real reason for the masses to interact with Web3 or interact with cryptocurrency. But companies like ShopX, we offer economic incentive for users to interact with within the space. So, for example, if ShopX works with a brand, with a brand the brand likes to use ShopX, then they attach a certain product to their NFT that they create. Now the customers will interact within the Web3 space because they want the certain product that's associated with NFT. But right now, the trend is just getting started with major brands entering the space, meaning that they will slowly and surely onboard their customers into the space. And this gives us to our pre the present moment of Web3. It's not that u it's not that user the user interface isn't that great, but as major brands come on board, it gets more steam. The major brands have the resources, and they kind of ha and they have to make their system usable usable for their customers thus increasing Web3 mass adoption greatly. So I would say we're about four to five years out from total mass adoption in Web3. And by total mass adoption, I mean for Web3 to be successful, just like it has to be like the internet in the sense users are using Web3, they don't even, they don't even need to know that they're using Web3. Okay, it's very interesting. So how do you or how to onboard a major brand into Web3? So at ShopX, our goal is to make it as simple as possible. So normally before companies like ShopX, if you're a brand, let's say you're Nike for um, example's sake, you wanted to enter the space, you'd have to hire a developer, you'd have to hire a Web3 developer, you'd have to hire a graphic designer, you'd have to do a bunch of stuff on the back end just to enter the space. And while a major company like Nike can do that because they have the budget, not every not every brand has twenty three or like twenty to thirty thousand dollars to drop on a project that they may not that may or may not work. So what ShopX did is we bundled all those technical technical services into an easy to use app. So if you're a brand like on if you're a brand on Shopify or WooCommerce, for your listeners, those are the two major two of the biggest e commerce platforms. So if you're a brand, you're on either of those two platforms, to enter Web3, all you have to do is go to the the app store, download ShopX get the appropriate amount of tokenized software licenses. And then from there, directly with an app, you can launch your own NFT collection in less than five minutes. It's so simple that during QA, my grandma was able to do it. 
And it's really just you go into the app, you fill out a couple forms, like a picture of your NFT, the price, a description, just really rudimentary information. And then from there, you can deploy your own smart, smart contract. You can add, since we're already linked to your Shopify or WooCommerce store, you can link whatever products you want that are already on your store to that NFT, and then your customers can purchase the NFT to gain access to the product. And we've also kept it simple for the brand's customer side because we're B2B2C, meaning we could sign all the brands of the world, but if the brands can't um, convince their customers to purchase the pass, the project is dead on the water. So as a customer of a brand wanting to purchase NFT, you can buy with Ethereum or normal cryptocurrencies, or you can also purchase a credit card to make things easier. All right, perfect, got it. And then what is the future of Web3 and why does crypto matter? Uh, so from a fundamental level, my overall goal is to live a nice, peaceful life. I don't think I can do that if I view the monetary system as corrupt. And I stumbled upon Bitcoin, or first precious metals as the answer, and eventually Bitcoin. So Web3, it matters for many, many reasons. A, it's going to onboard many people in the cryptocurrency space. Hopefully that fixes the financial incentives of the total monetary supply. But from a user standpoint, it's you actually own your data. So no one can just sell your data. You can't get canceled on the web for no apparent reason. You can create a bilateral share of value between a creator and consumer, meaning in Web3, if a music artist, let's say like a up-and-coming music artist were to create an NFT collection, his original fans purchase NFT, now for life, there is a connection between that artist and the fan who purchased NFT, meeting. 20 years down the line, if they're famous, they're front stage Coachella, they're like, okay, these are my original customers, they're my OGs, and you can airdrop them benefits, creating, so you can send value their way, and they can send value back to you because it's a one-to-one -one connection versus a normal way of, like, in the music industry, if you're working, like, a major label, they would take 30%, but this will keep the value between the consumer and creator. That's making it more efficient. Okay, perfect. And then why does crypto mm, Okay, why does crypto matter? Um long term I view the most basic human interaction as it's usually a economic transaction means like a buy and sell something. But to do that there has to be monetary there has to be money a medium of exchange for that to happen. Right now our current medium exchange in the United States is the US dollar and every other country is based off the US dollar. And every second of every day, the US, the Federal Reserve, which is not a, which is a privately owned company, is printing dollars to fund their own, like whatever they want, like war efforts, pay their friends, and all that stuff. And every time they print money, that's actually taking value away from the dollars most people have to work hard to earn. Now, in cryptocurrency, that doesn't, with Bitcoin specifically, that doesn't work. So, if that were, if Bitcoin were to become the global money, like the equivalent of digital gold, the only way to earn more Bitcoin is to provide value to society to earn that Bitcoin versus right now, the easiest way to get rich is to join politics and do corrupt behavior to earn that money. So I think Bitcoin fixes, fixes, it helps fix society on a macro level. Excellent. So thank you so much. And then what is your favorite coffee and or hot beverage? No, that's easy. Um, coffee, and coffee definitely goes black. And favorite hot hot beverage is honestly probably like uh, I like almond tea, I like boba or taro tea and boba. Those are two delicious ones. Excellent, excellent. And then lastly, could you please let our audience know how they can contact you and or what your social media handles are? Sure, sure. So in terms of websites, just check out shopx.co, S-H-O-P-X.co. The social media handles for that company are ShopX Labs on Twitter and ShopX Labs on Instagram. My personal Instagram is Eric D. McHugh, E-R-A-C-D-McHugh. And my Twitter is Eric McHugh Zero. So any of those methods can work pretty well. Excellent. Thank you so much, Eric, for being here. And explaining, well, that's some really like, um, I want to say high tech stuff, but it is. It's like really, it's really cool thinking about the Web3. So, anyway, but thank you very much for being here, okay? And you have a good one. I'm going to say goodbye for now. Thank you. You're welcome. 
everybody. That was the amazing Eric McHugh. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It was, it, for me, a little bit of it was over my head because um, I, it's like I understood, but I don't think I could explain it back and as clearly as Eric just did for us. And so, in order to receive a copy of this episode or and or to listen to it, you can go to any streaming platform. And also, um, you, you can also go to our website, and it's coffeechatwithcamille.com. Okay? So, thank you so much for listening to Eric McHugh, Why is Web3 Important? Bye for now. <laughs>